Hi everybody, my name is Anthony Jones, and this episode was brought to you by Insecurity. What's stopping you from chasing your dreams? Your own self-doubt. Let's try to remove some of that. And speaking of insecurity, I think a lot of times people ask all sorts of questions and these questions aren't necessarily helpful to them. When you don't ask high quality questions, you don't get direct answers from your favorite artists or mentors. Um, and maybe when they do give you an answer, it's not the answer you were looking for or an answer that you didn't expect was gonna not have as much value as you were hoping. And so this whole episode on YouTube, I'm going to talk about questions and meaning what kind of questions should you ask and what kind of questions you think are better to ask and how you should think about why they're better to ask and about the questions that people typically ask and why they're not the best types of questions to ask. So for instance, a good example of a question I hear a lot, which I don't think is a great question to ask, not because there's nothing that you can't learn from this question or this answer. Yeah, these types of questions, uh, I like to believe, don't bring actionable tasks or movement to your consistent art growth and these types of questions usually go along the lines of what tool do you use a good example of this would be just like hey what brush is that or hey what uh, app are you using or what software is this and these are actually great questions to ask if you just are generally uh, curious and you're not necessarily like wanting to know if that's going to make a big difference in your own skill but you're just curious you're just like hmm that what's that brush and i think there is a value to knowing which brush and what tools people are using if you're just trying to explore new avenues and see if there's tools that make you feel even more comfortable than you already do with the tools you already currently use but sometimes i think that when people ask about the tools especially those who are just starting out they are hoping that those tools will make a big difference in something else, which is their actual artistic growth. And I don't think this is a good question to ask if you are a real, real beginner where you are hardly putting in the practice anyway. A tool's not gonna make any change to your work ethic. So you shouldn't be asking that kind of question until you feel like you have some skills. And then it's gonna mean more to you, right? And a professional athlete might want to know or want to be curious about how another athlete uses a certain pair of shoes versus another one. Or like I was watching a video of how one basketball player holds a certain ball a very specific way. Now, that's really important to high level play. But if you don't even practice shooting a basket, that's not going to be as important for you. You might want to just get into the gym first and just throw the, the balls into the hoop and see how many you can make and practice continuously and constantly until you have a consistent flaw that you can start to recognize or you have a consistent uh, efficiency that you can also maximize. So I don't think this is a good question to ask if you're just starting out. And if you're running into your favorite artist or you have an opportunity, opportunity to talk to your favorite artist, you should ask him much more meaningful questions, okay? Another question would be something like, what is your favorite thing? Like, what's your, who's your favorite artist? What's your favorite tool? What's your favorite brush set? This goes in the same vein as the previous question. It's just too general. And I think this is kind of the heart of the problem. The questions aren't specific enough and they're not gonna give you insight into that person out of the gate. That question doesn't inspire them to a answer it in a really meaningful way. And so you need to ask a question that will hopefully inspire your favorite artist to basically answer the question in a meaningful, powerful way. So here, let, let me give you some examples. A good question I think you can ask your favorite artist or your favorite mentor or whatever, if it's tools related, you can ask them, what is it about your favorite tools that make them great for you? Like. What is it about your favorite software that you use often that you think is so great? Now, it's it's kind of like the same kind of question as before about like what is your favorite thing and what is the tool you're using, but we're being very specific. We're asking, hey, why is it that you like this tool 
and for what reasons? So for instance, if you were to ask me this question, hey, what, what, is, what is it about your favorite tool that helps you make great art? Or what is it that you love about that tool? So my favorite tool specifically at the moment is Photoshop, right? I love using Photoshop. And so what is the favorite part of my favorite tool? My favorite thing about it, and I would answer it, oh, you know, my favorite thing about Photoshop is that it's a, a really a full package and it's a an amazing photo or image creation tool. You have all sorts of tools available to you within this one. You have brush creation, patterns, tool presets, actions, gradations. You got Liquify, you got uh, Magic Wand, Lasso, Shape tools. There's so many things in there that a lot of other tools are starting to just try to catch up. And it's really hard for me to really move away from this uh, until I see a real change. And the ability to make some really customizable functionality out of my tool uh, I really like and Photoshop has all that and what I really like about it too could also be just legacy meaning that I've just been using it for so long that I'm really highly efficient at it and so it's hard for me to kind of completely move away from another tool that or move away from this tool because I feel so comfortable so you would really have to convince me that your tool has something really better to offer, even if it feels a little discomfort. And there are some tools that I feel this that do this for me. But anyway, let's get back to the question segment of this whole video. See how that question kind of inspired me. I can imagine if you asked this to some of my peers, they might have have some thoughts, you know, and they might tell you, well, you know, don't worry about the tool, don't worry about this. And you say, oh, I understand. I just want to know, like, why is it that you like Photoshop? Like, what is it specifically about Photoshop? Like, what is your favorite tool that you use often? In that tool, uh, in that software, and why do you why why do you use it often? Hey, why do you use the lasso tool so often? Is it so you can create better shapes? Is it more functional to you? Get a little bit more specific is all I'm trying to get at with these types of questions. Another great example is what is it what is it about your work that you really like? Like why do you like the things that you draw? What is it specifically that you think that your work really brings to the table, even in a portfolio? So if you're again, you're being more specific, say, hey, instead of what's your favorite artist, what's your favorite? you're saying, you're asking the artist very personal, like a very personal question. Hey, what is it about your work that you think is really great? Like, I love your work and I can give you all the reasons why I like it, but why do you like your work? Like what makes you happy about what you do? And they might answer it in a really surprising way. They might actually tell you that there's a lot of things that they don't like about their work. And they'll explain that just so they can stay humble. Other artists will take that question at face value and answer it very directly and say, oh, well, I think my work works well because of this. And other artists will just maybe be incredibly arrogant and just explain why they're so awesome. And none of these, these answers are wrong or bad. You know, like it's not a problem. You're just gonna learn something about this artist that's gonna instill you some wisdom instead of just asking arbitrary questions that may just be something they've already heard before. Get a little bit more personal, right? The first question was also very personal. Why is it that you like this thing? Not what is the best tool in general? What is this, this, like, no, no, no. Everyone's gonna have a different opinion about this. So get their different opinion. Ask them very directly and very specifically about their opinion about a very specific tool. Knowing full well, it's not a generalization. It's a very catered answer that might not relate to you or everybody, anybody else, but maybe some random person in the audience. But you wanna know because you wanna have a broader understanding. This is really valuable information. You know, you wanna ask questions that help reassure that what you're doing is going to help you move forward by practicing and drawing and going to these conventions and being you know seen by others and being criticized and you want to have some resolve that other people have experienced this too i know this for a fact not because i've asked questions directly but because i've just heard people tell me people cannot tell you enough why life is harder or hard for them and for many of you young artists, it might be important for you to hear from your favorite artists. What is it about you, you know, that made you, right? And to get that kind of question out, you should ask them something like, so I'm almost certain you've probably experienced rejection. 
And if not, I would like to know how that went. But I feel that most artists, especially successful artists, the reason why they're successful is because they were able to take rejection. And I'm just curious how you were able to take on rejection and failure because clearly you are very successful and you're very accomplished. And because of those factors and those truths, I feel that there's something you're, you have a really strong resolve and I wanna know how that works. Now see, you could probably shorten that question to something like, hey, you know, uh, how many times have you been rejected and how did you deal with rejection? But if you try to ask a question that acknowledges the generality of that question, like uh, about rejection, like you're saying, hey, I, I believe that most successful people have experienced tons of rejection and failure in their life, hence is why they are successful. I'm curious to, about your opinion on that. Like, what, what do you think you may have done differently to help you mitigate rejection and failure? That puts praise into the person that you're asking question. You're acknowledging that this is not a generalization question. You are, again, being very personal. And you want to know specifically their experience, you know, and then they're going to give you some really solid piece of advice. And if I was asked that question, I've been asked this question in, in many shapes and forms. And sometimes I have not been asked this question, but I know that they need to hear my opinion about this. The way that I usually answer this type of question is very simple. I usually will tell them that it is part of the deal. It is not a bug, it is a feature. To fail, to feel insecure, to feel a struggle. And when you tell people this, especially when they're first starting out in their art career, it really, it's really, really powerful. I've seen it move many, many of folks. In fact, I believe many of you who follow me on my YouTube channel, listen to my streams, listen to these conversations that I have with other people, uh, because I am finding that common ground. I'm, I am relating my earlier experiences as an artist to you so that you could feel more comfortable and confident that you're on your way too. And I think that's really of value. And I really want that answer and that question to be out there more often. And I think if you guys are asking questions to your favorite artists, these are the kinds of questions you should be asking them to help fight against your own insecurities, to help get answers to questions that you should be, you should have a broader understanding. And there's obviously cases for just like, hey, how do you use that brush? Or hey, what brush are you using? <laughs> you know, that I'm not going to say is a bad question or a stupid question. Because I ask these questions even still amongst my peers. I really do. It's not like I've stopped asking these questions. I still ask them. But as I become more experienced, I realize I also ask more intelligent questions just based off of my experience and a lot of times when I ask these questions I don't ask anybody directly I ask myself this question and then I just go online to find the answers and whenever you do that that's even more rewarding sometimes the questions you ask are to yourself and you should just go and answer them for yourself as well or hopefully maybe have somebody answer it for you but you would have that question and you have that on your mind in the forefront of your mind. And, and so you're not going around asking these generalized questions just because you should, you feel like you should. You should go to places that have workshops and speakers and be very prepared to ask very, very meaningful questions and questions that you really want answers to. And if you don't do that, you're gonna get answers that are just also general and they're gonna be helpful at some level, but not as helpful as those really very personal, very specific kinds of questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. If you guys have any other questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.